Welcome back to Julie's Wreath Boutique. So let's make a beautiful fall flower. I made this the other day on my Amazon Live and I'm gonna share with you how to make it here as well. If you wanna check out my Amazon Lives, the link will be in the description box below. But let's take poly burlap and let's do a new center and let's make a beautiful wreath. Let's get ready and craft. All right, I know crafting is coming, but I have something to tell you first. If you have been following me for a while, you would know that I started something called Julie's Biz Boutique. What is that? That is a business group for online creatives. If you are someone who is trying to sell their wreaths, sell their crafts, sell something, and social media has you stumped, Etsy has you confused, Pinterest, you don't even know where to start, I can help you. So, Julie's Biz Boutique, the cart is open. It's only open for a limited time. It will be open until this next Friday night. I believe that's like October 29th or something like that. <laughs> Anyways, I want to have you. If you need a community of like-minded people trying to figure out this whole social media world, how to get an audience in front of your beautiful creations, I can help you. And we have past trainings that's already been done. So you're going to have a library of trainings to find out how to do Facebook, how to do Pinterest, how to do TikTok, how to do YouTube. I teach you how to do that too. So we've got that going on. The second thing that we have going on is if you're kind of unsure about the whole thing, the whole business group thing, I want you to join me for a masterclass. The biggest mistakes you're making in your online business and how to fix them. I'm going to share those tips with you. And that's a training you'll get to keep. Now, it does cost $10 to join that. And you're probably wondering, Julie, why are you charging me $10? Because let's be honest, if I charge you $10, you'll make it a point to show up. If I do it for free, probably won't show up. So I want you to be there. It's $10. I promise you it will be worth it. And listen, if you join, there's two different times to join that masterclass. It's at noon and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's not going to be on Facebook. It's going to be through a Zoom link meeting style. So if you want to join us for that masterclass, I want to have you there. And let me tell you what I can do to help you in your business. So let's go on to making this beautiful wreath. So we're back and this is actually an Amazon Live that I did and I like to sometimes record it and then put it up here on YouTube. So I had gotten this burgundy poly burlap quite a while ago and some of this plaid that we're gonna use. So if my hands are looking like I'm talking, but I'm not really making sense, this is a pre-recorded and now this is a voiceover. So the first step is of course, we're gonna use a wood burner. You can see that I have a rotary cutter and my wood burner, and then it's got a glass cutting board. All of these products that I use can be found in my Amazon shop. Now, we're gonna take a piece of plastic canvas. This is gonna be found in the yarn and embroidery section. We are going to make the smallest ring of our 10 inch wreath form, and then we are gonna cut it out and attach it with zip ties. It's that easy. And now we have the base of our wreath. So it's pretty simple to do. Um, if you look over to the left, that is an ultimate mesh holder by Susie's Reads and Things. And um, I will have a link um, for you if you'd like to purchase those in the description box below. But let's get started on the main thing. And I had this mesh. I'm going to look up to see where we can get this mesh. And just like that, I looked up and Mel's Crafty Mojo has this plaid mesh in stock, but let's talk about the placement. We're gonna work on bar two. We're going to put um, these petals on the crossbar section. So I'm just gonna do my basic petal method. You're just gonna take a 10 by 10 inch square, finish side at the top, finish side at the bottom, and then you're going to bring them together and um, gather them and put the left petal over the right petal and place it on your wreath form. So do this again. You're gonna do this five times, okay? You can do this with any kind of plaid mesh. It doesn't have to be this specific brand, but you can really play with the colors when you have a plaid just because it allows us to use more than one color. So the next step is we're gonna take our burgundy poly burlap. I did look up and the reshop does have this in stock. Um, you're going to keep putting it on row two, but you're going to put it right beside 
each plaid. You're gonna do five of these. So we did five plaid, and now we're going to do five of the burgundy, and we're gonna put them right to the right of that poly burlap plaid piece, okay? So it's pretty simple. We're gonna keep the same pattern, and it'll help when you're trying to put it all together. It's just that, that simple. It's just an easy wreath to make because it's a simple petal. You're just gonna bring it together in the middle, you're gonna gather it, flip it over, and slightly put that left petal overlapping your right petal, okay? And then you're gonna clip off the zip tie. So next up, we are going to work on the next color. So at this point, we're going to use the natural. So in this particular poly burlap plaid, we had orange, we had natural, we had like a moss green or olive green, and you really could use any of it and the burgundy. So you have um, one more spot to fill on each side. So it's going to go to the right of the burgundy. And basically you need five plaid, five burgundy, and five of these natural colored petals. And it's that simple. So that's the first layer. The first layer will have 15 petals all together. So if you were actually on the um, Amazon Live, I pretty much let you guys decide what we did next. And so for the second layer, we're gonna work on bar three. So when you're looking at these um, wreath frames, I work from bar one, bar two, bar three. So we started on bar two, and now we're actually laying petals on bar three. So basically all we're gonna do is we're going to interchange the colors from natural to burgundy, and they're gonna go in between the existing petals that we have on this wreath frame. Now, I do wanna kind of tell you at the end here, I had to kind of squeeze an extra petal in so that we would have the right amount of burgundy and the right amount of natural petals. So that's just, so we ended up having 16 petals on this frame. So you're gonna go all the way around, variegate the colors. If you don't wanna variegate the colors, then just use the one color. If you just wanna use the plaid and one accent color, do that. But the important thing is to leave the plaid for that center um, petal line. So let's go on to the plaid. All right, so here we're going to add a zip tie. And these are my favorite zip ties from Amazon, guys. Everything that I get, like the um, cuttery board and the wood burner, my glue gun, you can all get at Amazon. Now I put the zip tie about an inch into that center and we're gonna do the same petal, the exact same petal, and but this time we're just gonna use the plaid. So I really think you could probably get two wreaths if you had three different colors of poly burlap and you could do probably two wreaths on the 10 inch wreath frame. Now I did use about 12, I believe, of this burlap, but if you wanted to make two of these wreaths, you might wanna maybe kinda of do 10 in the middle. You can just, literally, it's all about um, just, you know, widening that gap in between the petals, that's all. If you want to only use 10 to make sure you have enough mesh, go right ahead. I want, I want you to be able to make the most wreaths with the amount of supplies that you have. And um, these zip ties, again, I think I mentioned I got them on Amazon. They're my favorite zip ties ever, and I always have them in the description box below. So um, you're just gonna keep doing that till it's full, and I just think it's gonna make, it makes a beautiful full wreath. All right, so now that we have all our petals, let's work on the center. You are going to cut, choose the color of your choice. I chose the burgundy. I cut these at about 14 to 16 inches long. Um, you could give or take a little bit, depending on how much mesh you had. I ended up only needing to do three of these. So basically, you can see I'm putting it kind of long ways, and I'm gonna do this three times. And I'm gonna set my zip tie in there, and then I'm just gonna do the curl method. I curl sides up, and I curl one side in a little bit, and I curl the other side, and then you just are gonna scrunch it and gather it up until you have this curl method. I think we did that last week in last week's video. So same method guys. Um, and then we're gonna do this three times. It's that simple. Um, and you have a beautiful center. Now I used to do this with five or six inch mesh years ago. So this isn't really a new center for me, but it's a new center because I'm using 10 inch mesh. That's pretty much the only difference. I used to do this years ago. 
um, for a wreath that I, a sunflower wreath that I made. But I really liked how it turned out. If you wanted to add um, another ruffle, you could do that. If the center of your wreath, if you were making a smaller wreath and you had a smaller center, maybe only two ruffles would be needed. It's really kind of up to you. But I just think that three really finishes the 10 inch wreath frame off really nicely. Now, your question may be, Julie, I wanna use like a Dollar Tree frame. Well, you can do that. Um, you just are gonna need an extra row of petals. So you're gonna put those on the plastic canvas. And I failed to mention, um, I had burned my arm, so that's why I have a big Band-Aid on my arm. It's doing much better now, but you know, I'm clumsy. And I think I told you that, guys, last weekend. I'm clumsy and this is what happens. So I'm just kind of looking at my wreath here and I just think it's beautiful. So on the back here, I'm showing you how those zip ties for the center are kind of crosswise and um, that's how you're gonna do that. So the next step are leaves. If you don't wanna put leaves on your wreath, don't worry about it. But we're gonna focus just to the right of where the plaid re um, petals were. So basically at your cross sections, you're gonna add a leaf. Now we put it under bar one and bar two, and we're gonna make the basic petal fold here. And then we're gonna flip it over, like I'm showing you, and then I'm gonna put it underneath, as you can see, underneath the frame. This is a little tricky. People ask me, Julie, why do you wait to put your leaves on last? I don't really know why. This is just the way I do it. If you wanna put it on first, go right ahead. But you're gonna put five of these on your wreath frame. Um, I think part of me does it because, um, as you can see, some of the mesh is unraveling. And I kind of feel like if you put your leaves on too soon, it just gives it more opportunity for it to unravel. And I want to be really careful with that. And so we just are making one more leaf here. And we're going to add five of these again to the right of those cross brackets. I had something on that cutting mat that I needed to get rid of, obviously. And then I'm going to flip it over and put it underneath and attach it. So we're gonna do this five times. Okay, so the finishing product is we need to cover the back of the wreath. I always use felt. So before I started this wreath, I took my frame and I cut out a piece of felt. And I usually have a little pair of scissors that I love, but I couldn't find them. And again, we use what we have when we have it. So I just took one of those Oh, I forget what those tools are called, but they're super sharp, so you need to be really careful. And I just poke a hole in the felt and then I attach it to the wreath frame. Now, um, I don't typically add a loop for my um, wreath to hang from. I just like to hang it on the metal wire wreath frame. I've never had issues with the wet, uh, metal wreath frames either. I love them. Here I'm showing you my Surebonder cordless glue gun. You can glue the um, felt to it. I just don't really recommend that, but I love this glue gun. Again, it's on Amazon. I don't know why I'm holding it in the shot that long. Okay, Julie, put it away. Put it away. There, there, I put it away. <laughs> Sometimes you have to laugh at yourself, okay? And then you're just going to put as many of these as you want, and then I just kind of flip the heads I, of them over, and I clip it, and so at this point, I'm just going to straighten it out, I probably should have added the leaves on before I added the felt, but you can do it any way you want. You're gonna just straighten it all out and you have a beautiful wreath. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. It was a lot of fun to make for you. If you made it this far in the video, would you please leave me, oh, welcome fall. Say fall or welcome fall in the comments below because it's finally fall. And I'm gonna be decorating my porch soon, so I need some ideas. So. Every Sunday night, we're here on YouTube, so see you next Sunday night. Bye-bye.